they squeezed in about 200 people in this room. And the holes you see up there was given way 200 men had light and air. And that was the only way they could determine day and night. So the thing is, if we should squeeze 200 people in here, the temperature in this room would definitely change. Mm. This place is going to be hot. Yeah. At the end of the day, we spent a maximum days of about three months. You had to go to toilet. So, like for example, wherever you find yourself, mm. you had to go to toilet, you had to urinate, you had to sleep, you had to eat, you had to drink water, you had to do everything in the dungeons. So by the time the ships arrived, many had died. It is estimated that out of every four, one died before the ships arrived. Diseases like diarrhea and vomiting killed many. They never had access to medicine when they were sick. I want to show you something on the floor carefully. There are gutters on the floor. Those gutters were provided for toilets and urine to go through into the sea. But you can ask this question how many times? and the forest and during run If about 200 men were here, and if this dungeon was used for more than 100 years, so for more than 100 years, this place was filled up, emptied, filled up. The British never cleaned this place up. So with time, toilet, urine, mud, vomit, everything they left got mixed up and covered the floor, the entire floor to about this height. Throughout this height, this whole place was filled up. 1973, we excavated this room. And after the excavation, we found the original floor and the gutters. But we left you this portion to see. Thank you. So this portion here, this portion here actually, this contains everything they left. Yes. So this contains some DNA. Yes. Contains toilet. Mm -hmm. Urine, vomit, blood, sweat, tears, saliva, everything they left, we have it here. And we've had nothing like excavation for the rest of the rooms. So immediately we step out, remember that we are walking on top of everything they left. The thing is, we can't go about removing things. We do that, we are distorting history. We are changing the narrative, so we left the other ones there for us to see. And also bear in mind that language was a barrier. They couldn't communicate among themselves within these tangents because they were stolen from different ethnic groups within West Africa. Because as far as from Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, they brought people here to be shipped out. So understand this, the coast of West Africa and Central Africa was a transit point during the transatlantic slave trade. But it is estimated that Ghana exported, or Ghana transported over 40%. So we can actually say that Ghana was one of the main transit points during the transatlantic slave trade. So the people that trans Ghana transported were not necessarily Ghanaians. Some were brought from the neighboring West African countries. And those who did not survive the conditions in these dungeons. Normally, when they died, let's say if about five or ten people died today, the bodies were piled up. They added a load. The load could be a rock or a metal. Then the bodies were thrown into the sea. So we got to know that the Atlantic Ocean was infested with sharks. Sharks from different oceans would swim all the way to this ocean because they had it in their minds that they were going to drop bodies either from the ships or from the dungeons. And again, we learned that till date, it is still embedded in the brains of sharks to follow ships from West Africa to the Caribbean, to the West Indies and to North America. So you can think of the million African bodies, of a million bodies they dropped in the ocean. Because for it to be embedded in the brains of the sharks, then that means that cycle continued for a longer period, for more than 400 years, it also, it also meant that millions of African bodies were thrown into the sea. Any questions or comments, brothers and sisters, before we move on? Good. So I will lead you through the other rooms.